No one's pushing you into doing psychedelics or any other substance that you're not aligned with. Be scared and ask questions. Be scared and continue to be curious about things that can potentially help you. And I'm just like, wow, it was tough if I was still the same version of myself I was in 20, at the beginning of 2020. I would be bankrupt probably. So much of my evolution over the past three years to psychedelics and me doing the integrative work. I was an anti-person and now I'm like, everyone who can do it should do it. Unless you have some medical background or some reason why medically why you can't. I just feel like there's so much to explore. Even if, I just think there's so much to explore. Some things need to be healed in community and we offer you something unparalleled with the Condor Approach Live. We're going to talk about how to prepare for, navigate, and integrate your psychedelic experiences for yourself or those that you love. These live events are catalysts. They really allow you to uncover and unleash the potential that you already have within you. When you're surrounded by like-minded people who are walking the walk and are committed to the path, you may even find your next facilitator or coach, but this event is designed to foster genuine relationships, give you community that supports and uplifts you, wants to see you win. If you've been wanting to embody this understanding and take these skills to a new level, then a live dynamic environment is just the way. You can go to thecondorapproach.com. That is thecondorapproach.com. And we will see you in February. Whether you're a life coach, therapist, biohacker, invested in wellness, or in the healthcare profession, if you have an intention to work in psychedelic spaces, <laughs> you're in the right place then. If you're called, get involved. But first, get informed. Let's talk the four ends, intake, intention, in-space integration, leading to deeper transformations. Psychedelic Coach Podcast, Todd Cole, walk you through the process, it's all possible. Leave space for the follow-through. Most importantly, integration is not optional. Y'all, you know what time it is. It is the Psychedelic Coach Podcast. I'm your host, Cole. I have one of my favorite people on the planet on this show. And when I say that, it's because when I love someone, it's because they're authentic. They are all them. And it shows no matter whether they're in front of a camera, behind a camera, not in a camera. It's like my favorite trait. So not only this person also came and spoke at our live events, and it's still probably the most talked about session that people still bring up from that session. So I'm excited for y'all to meet her. She's doing epic work. Most importantly, she's being epically her. And I would love to welcome April Franks to the show. What's happening, April? Thank you, Colin friend. <laughs> I'm just over here living my best life in, in Houston, Texas, loving my new relocation and all the things that's transpiring in my world. And I'm grateful that you asked me to be here today. Mm -hmm. Over there, luxuriating and living. I am life. luxuriating 100%. I love it. So part of why I wanted to have you on today is there's not a lot of coaches that share openly about how plant medicine, psychedelics have improved their life. And I understand why in their public images and whatever. But like I said, you are who you are. You share with your audience the things that you actually do. Because you know, it's something that when I have watched people that aren't really sharing with the public what changed their life, I'm like, you're like gatekeeping the truth over there. You're saying, oh, all you have to do is do this and you'll be happy when really they're doing other things. They're not telling anybody. Right. So that is so true. And I hate it. <laughs> I get yeah, it. I'm, I get it. I'm not a fan. Really, I just. It's a disservice. And I get it. People don't want to divulge their personal things, but it's, I just feel like it's, I talked about this when I went on a journey in January of 2023. And I talked about this in like a video that I did. And I was like, 
you, people out here thinking that they're just fucked up and they're trying all these things and they're not working for them when the people that are coaching them are utilizing what I call accelerants. Like to me, psychedelics, integration, plant medicine, that is an accelerant to self-awareness, introspection, healing, evolving. And I just think it's really unfair to, for people because people really think they just fucked up and it's just them. Yeah. They're uniquely broken. So let's back it up a little bit just to give, because today's story okay. is not about your whole life story. You can Google April. I'll have all her links. But to give a little bit of a backstory so people have context, what got you into entrepreneurship to begin with and then into your healing journey? So what got me into entrepreneurship? I, entrepreneurship got into me, really. I have always had an entrepreneurial spirit. So I'm 47 now. I started my first entrepreneurial venture when I was in high school doing hair in my mother's kitchen. I stopped doing that. And then I started doing manicures and pedicures in a barbershop in my hometown of Mobile, Alabama with no license. And then that just led me to desiring more and to seeing that more was possible if you worked at something and you were good at something. I'm not a rule breaker. I'm a nonconformist. I am a rule breaker and I'm a nonconformist. So I was like, what do I need to do? I dropped out of high school, no GED, no degree. And so I was like, I got to figure something out. And entrepreneurship was the way. So I got my real estate license and that led me into a whole arena of. Uh, people that thought differently from me and looked different than me. And that really helped expand my vision. In addition to being an army brat, traveling the world, starting school in Berlin, Germany, which most people don't know, I speak intermediate German. And that's been a big element and contributor to who I am as a person. So that's how I got into entrepreneurship, specifically coaching. I think that really came from just this desire to help people. And I had been wounded in my own traumas growing up. And so that really, helpers like to help. Broken people like to help people. We don't want other people to experience what we've experienced or we want to help them out of it. I think some of us have that little piece, that little slither of savior complex, like, girl, get it together. You can do this. We're advocates for sure. So. That's really how the entrepreneurship journey started. And segueing into psychedelics, there's, man, we go through our lives, Cole, and there's so many things that happen. Divorce, breakups, heartbreaks, bankruptcy, failures. The little thing that was said to you when you were seven years old, when all these things pile up and when you start to become self-aware or so broken that there's nowhere else to look but within, then you start looking for other modalities to help you. And I'm a proponent of multiple modalities of therapy and medicines to support an individual to their fullness. But I was anti-psychedelics until 2020. That's pretty recent. And like you said, even with psychedelics, it's that same path. When there's nowhere else to turn for answers, they become an opportunity or a possibility because that, I haven't heard it say that, said that way. You get so broken, there's nowhere else to turn. There is nothing else. So there's also, there's nothing to lose and you can't think the same way. It's not possible because you're so far under, regular answers won't even help at all. So it's either you get so desperate, you're willing to figure it out. And anytime I talk to people where they're like, yeah, I couldn't do it. You do. I'm like, you probably haven't been to the depth of despair I had where it was like, no, this all changes or I'm done. Like I'm not doing this anymore. And for me, it's that, I think that's the gift in what we both share in common, not graduating from high school, not having degrees. I could never do it the way everybody else did. I'll because never. if I applied for a job, they'd be like, what are your degrees? <laughs> like, it's just right. that was never an option. So I had to learn how to be good with people, how yeah. to show up, be committed, because at least 
No one could outwork me. Point blank. I'd show up early. I'd stay late. Bang. I'd be the helper. I'd fix Bang. the problem. Bang. Yeah. And right. And that's why we buy. People will take dependable. Yes. That's the difference, right? So 2020 happens. Before that, you are anti-substances overall with psychedelics, or we'll mm-hmm. say with psychedelics. What changed? What changed was I fell in love with a narcissist and I couldn't get over it. And I didn't understand why, because I am a getter over her. I don't linger in pain or suffrage. And I couldn't understand what the fuck was happening. I was like, why can't I shake this? <laughs> like, it wasn't the business. I was making seven figures. It wasn't. And it was part of it was also like this feminine element that I was in this masculine cloak that was really aggressive. And I'm an Aries, so I'm always going to have a little edge. But I wasn't feeling like who I could be. You know what I'm saying? I was conditioned. I mean, like everybody, you know, until you like, wait a minute, is this my life I'm living or is this somebody else's life I'm living? And a friend introduced me to it and I was like, I don't want to do that. And she probably talked to me about it for six months. And I was like, girl, no. And then one day I happened to be at her house and she was like, you want to try it? And I was like, you know what? Why the hell not? So that day, I, I, I wasn't even thinking about the individual I was wanting to move on from and really just understand, like, how I stayed in that situation. Like, what part of me was damaged that I would do that? And I tried it. And immediately, it gave me so many answers and it helped. And I was like, okay. And it wasn't until another... I had a little here and there, but not really like some microdosing, but I'm not a microdoser. So I was like, okay, I don't really enjoy that. And so it was literally a year and almost, no, it was about 15 months before I even did another high dose journey. And and the first one wasn't even, I wouldn't even consider it a high dose. It was maybe two grams, which is not a high dose. So... I just was open. I started doing research. And then what pushed me over the edge was your community and speaking to your community and learning more about it and all these different amazing souls coming into my world. And that really supported me from an educational standpoint on the benefits of psychedelics, not just from a recreational standpoint. I am not a recreational psychedelic user, no shade to anyone who is. I enjoy really the benefits of being a more expanded human as a result of the awareness that comes Mm -hmm. with that. Yeah. And I'm with you. The only thing that I will, that I have microdosed regularly is Kana, which is not a psychedelic. It's a psychoactive. But I think this goes to the personality thing. I'm like, no, we're going to do it or we're not going to do it. Mm -hmm. I just, I'm not really a half doer of things. And so to me, a microdose is a distraction from what Mm -hmm. I either want to do or need to get done. Mm -hmm. But because if I'm going to do that work with myself, then I'm going to clear the space and give myself that full attention. And so I feel like that shows up there too. I think too, like, we have such a responsibility, I think, to ourselves to at least explore. And it's interesting because our society and our world doesn't give two shits about your healing, okay? It doesn't care about your awareness at all. And so there's, that's why there's so many little pockets, your pocket of you and your tribe, my pocket and me and my tribe and all these other people that are out there wanting to help others through this modality. I think it's just time for people to really start asking themselves questions on what do you really need to support your expansion? Because I was talking to a, one of my really good friends that I've known since I was in high school. and. I said, bitch, you've been on antidepressants for 20 years and you're still depressed. So I don't think that's working. You've been in therapy for a decade talking about your problems. I don't think that's working. And people have to ask themselves, is what you're doing working? Do you really want to feel better? 
do you really want to be better? And you got to be honest with yourself because some people don't. That's why I got a divorce. My ex-husband said he was fine being unhappy. And that I was not. So this is our opportunity in time and space to be honest with ourselves. What do we really need? And mm-hmm. what do we need to explore? And if we have fears, if we have fears, let's get educated and be well informed. Yes. The amount of people that will complain about what they have, but not actually pause to see what's not working and just continue to participate in what's not working. It's rampant. And I understand they get, they've got the life, the job, the kids, they can't stop. But that was something for me that was when I first met Ta, Ta was anti also nursing, grew up in Brooklyn, crack of the eighties. When I first invited him, he's psychedelics. You want me to do some drugs with some hippie white people? I'm not doing that, right? And for him, that was years that he was like, no. But when you understand that, when I first started to see him, I didn't communicate it out loud, but I put a pin in the future that said, if this man is not willing to wake himself up and change things of why he's not happy, then Mm -hmm. I'm out. I got to keep it moving because I will not, I will hold and walk with someone, like hold their hand. I will not carry them. And so it was like you, I have to be with someone willing to stand and walk with me or else I will outgrow you. I move fast. I go hard. And so I need someone that can, if you're going to be able to hold space for me, you got to be able to keep up. Yeah. You can't keep up. It's not going to work. That same girl. Well, it's nothing. Listen, can we just put a pin in that for a second? I think just let's talk about just a, a, a slither about partnership. It is so important. Because a lot of what people are learning is they don't want to be where they're at with who they're with. And you have to be honest about what you need and be willing to communicate that. Like, quite literally, you have to be honest about that. And I'm the, I'm literally the exact same way. I don't need, I feel instantly. I don't need all day, all year, three months to know that, listen, you go, you come in. I want you, there's space for you. I'm creating space for you. Okay, if you're scared, that's cool. We can go scared, but are you coming? Why well, can't they cancers? But that's another podcast. Carry on. <laughs> I'm a Pisces, so I'm all over the place. So Ta's a good grounding for it. But th- it's that though. Like everyone says, or they'll meet me and Ta. They'll say, "Man, I want a re- relationship like y'all." I'm like, "No, you don't. Mm-hmm. No, you don't." Because the level of confrontation and communication required mm-hmm. to stay clear, to stay on the same page. We don't renew vows. Why would we do that? We don't. We have a new marriage every year and it doesn't start with, do you want to be with me? It starts with what do each of us want? We write out our dream relationship, what we want for our life. Then we exchange and say, where does that line up? Where doesn't it? And then we make agreements. If he wants to do something more or less, can I agree with that? But we don't believe in compromise. We can change our mind. We can come mm-hmm. to agreements. Mm-hmm. We will not compromise who we are. Mm-hmm. That's not an option. I if I believe it. a certain thing, I have to be able to communicate to him why it's important. I have to be able to communicate. And that's another space so few people are willing to do. And it's, y'all, you could take classes on communication. This is not a natural skill. It's people that mm-hmm. have confronted things enough times, saw what didn't work, said, oops, I guess I won't do it that way. If I want to be, it's all skills. And until all- you do that work with yourself, you won't be able to do it with anybody else. So when I see someone acting out in relationships, I already know the work they've done within mm-hmm. themselves. And so, April, you work with a lot of women who I would say, this is my projection or classification, a lot of like type A performers who want to do it right, who want to make sure that they're mm-hmm. not going to mess it up. So why? Do you think that is? And what do you think the opportunities for growth are for someone to explain that maybe is trying to do everything right so they don't confront things because they're afraid of it being wrong? I think at some point you just have to be okay with the fear. You have to, it's because it just paralyzes people. They never find out. So getting to this place where you're you're trying not to be scared to do something. When did that ever work? And 
what area, even when, just remember for you women out there, I don't know about how this is for men, but remember when you were a virgin, you were terrified to have sex for the first time. Like you had all the, heard all these horror stories, the thing is going to break and you might bleed and this, that, and the other. And you're terrified at what could happen, right? You are just terrified at what can happen. And, but you did it. You did it. What was the other thing? You were scared to leave a job. You were scared to fall in love. It's like, when did fear become something that stopped us from doing shit? Like, you, we have courage in other areas of our life, so if you have it in you. And I think it comes down to, again, educating yourself, being in communities where you are educated, informed, and you can make decisions. No one's pushing you into doing psychedelics or any other substance that you're not aligned with. And so my thing is be scared and learn. Be scared and ask questions. Be scared and continue to be curious about things that can potentially help you. And when and or if you become ready, then know where to go safely for that. Know where to go safely for that. I'm just at this place where it's like, I'm going to be 50 in three years. And I think about that kind of frequently this year as I'm going to be 48 in six months. And I'm just like, wow, it was tough if I was still the same version of myself I was in 20, at the beginning of 2020. I would be bankrupt probably. And I would not be living where I'm living. I would be overwhelmed and disconnected from myself. And I'm so grateful and I attribute so much of my evolution over the past three years to psychedelics and me doing the integrative work. So I, I, you know, I was an anti-person and now I'm like, everyone who can do it should do it. Unless you have some medical background or some reason why medically why you can't. I just feel like there's so much to explore, even if I just think there's so much to explore. I think we care too much about shit that doesn't matter. People are stressed out about things that don't matter at the end of the day. People don't know how to deal with things. They don't know how to cope. There's just, there's just a clusterfuck of things happening on our planet. And it's like you have to give yourself that opportunity because there is no one else. No one's coming. No one's coming. No one's coming to save no one. It's like you got to literally do this shit and go seeking on your own. So if you're listening to this and you're wondering like, yo, you got to do it on your own. And yeah. Did I answer your question? Yeah. The, that was one of the biggest things I was like processing this morning was around what you just said. I watch people sit and wait for when it's going to be easier. Mm -hmm. They're like, yeah, after my kids get, get to college or after I leave this job, and it doesn't happen because mm -hmm. it's always something else. Then your mother gets sick or so and so delete everyone's free of this. But life keeps happening. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, when you learn that so much of what you won't lean into is because of your past and that fear, when you move with scared, when you move past scared, you build yes. confidence and unshakable ability or unshakable knowing you will figure it out. And for me, that's freedom. That no matter what happened to my house, my money, my relationship, my animals, my stuff, my health, I will figure it out. And that is an unshakable confidence I have because of moving through things no matter what. And I think that another thing that we share is what I had to do work on was stepping out of the hustle grind because I was grinding to do things. And mm -hmm. that was taking a toll on my health. That mm -hmm. was taking a toll on my relationships because then I was hyper independent. I was like, yes. I don't need anyone for anything. I, I would have people in my life, but I didn't need anyone in my life because I'm good alone. I'm good. The I, that was the problem. Collection plate. Pass the collection plate, Cole. Seriously, I was her, girl. Yeah. I was, and it's so crazy because I'm like, wow. I really was a fucking bitch. I really was acting like that. And I'm an Aries. I'm a sap. Like, I need, I need everybody, okay? I need all the people. And it's, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And oh my God, man. 
I isolated so many people and I discarded so many people. I really did. And so many relationships and just because I was in that mode of, and it was, and like I told some my audience, I was like, hey, when I started this business, this, this is a trauma bit project. Yep. I started this business on trauma, on not wanting to be poor, not wanting to be broke again, not wanting to be a, a, in the food stamps again, not wanting to. I started this business on all of those things. It wasn't to aspire to. No, it was to eat. It was to prove. And it broke me and it broke a lot of relationships and I don't wish to change anything. I'm grateful for the opportunity to be able to share and help someone else avoid that. And also I'm glad to be on the other side Mm -hmm. with you. That right there, the, the, when I hear so many coaches talking about, you just have to do what you love. I'm like, yeah, if you heal to a certain point, you're driven by that. Most people are not driven by inspiration. They're driven by desperation, a refusal to stay where they are or what you talked about. The fear just becomes greater of homelessness and not having enough food that you can't slack off. And that has tons of value to a point. And then just like we grow, that way has to change because it stopped working the way that it did. But I don't, it's like this hyper optimistic in the coaching realm. You just need to find what you love. Not, yeah, that's a nice place to get to. But if you're not there yet, whatever drives you to do different, just make sure you're surrounded by people that are improving their life, not just their financial situation. Mm-hmm. Where are they in their relationship? Yeah. I would never, I refuse to follow anyone who is money first. But then when I see them interact with their family or their friends or their team, I'm like, oh, no. I Same, girl. That. Same. Listen, let me tell you something. There was a woman. We were friends. We're not friends anymore. There was a couple of them. I could see their faces. And there's three of them, actually. One of them, I fired as my brand strategist three years ago after me going through these transformations. And I watched how they treated people. Another one, she came to my conference. She spoke at my conference and I saw how she talked to her team. She was never invited back. I was like, why are you treating people like that? You're not a fucking God, bitch. You are, but you're not. Mm -hmm. And another one, I watched her secretly be so judgmental of everyone and just mentally dog everyone because she hates herself. And I literally, I'm on the same page with you. Like, you can't surround yourself with that space. You have to uphold. And people, and I think too, Cole, people don't have a set set of values that they actually live by. There are non-negotiables with me. Integrity is my core value as a human and in my business. I don't lie to people. I don't take their money and I deliver services. If we have a mishap, we fulfill it. We make it right. I don't believe in manipulating my audience. I'm just not doing any of those. I'm not going to be an abuser in the space. Mm -hmm. I work with women. We have been abused enough. I'm not going to contribute to that. And there's so many people that You have to, when you start getting on this journey for yourself, you're going to have to, you got to, you you don't have a choice but to look around and be like, and it makes you even wonder how, when, how did I not see that before? How did I not see that before? And I had to cut those people off hard. Yeah, there's, it's, I don't know if you experienced this, but I know that me and Ta have where we have on one level total acceptance of wherever anyone is. But the difference, especially for me, is I determine how close you are to me based off of your actions. Mm -hmm. I don't care what anyone says. Mm -hmm. And I'm also super forgiving if someone can come talk to me. Like I can forgive and let it go over here. But if we're going to have any rapport, you got to bring it to me like immediately or else I can't trust what you're saying. And that's a harder place to come back from. Yeah. And is, 
as we started to grow in our space and the teams we were bringing in for like tech and for our events, the stories they're telling me where they're like, we want to work with y'all as much as possible because we feel better working here. Like we leave Mm -hmm. this event feeling like better people, like who we want to be. It reminds us. And most events that we've been doing here in Austin, it's, I feel traumatized, belittled, all these things. And these are coaches that are supposed to be in the self-development area. And for me, that is the height of inauthenticity. These might be people that genuinely want to help humanity, but they are not authentic in how they're treating all of humanity, right? Mm -hmm. And as someone that has been a bartender, a waitress, cleaned toilets, whatever, I've been in those jobs. And that taught me more about how people are than any high level position I ever had. Mm -hmm. Because Mm -hmm. to see how dismissive or how they would speak to me when really I was just maybe in a hard spot. Because at one point, April, I'm cleaning friends' houses and I had just been living in a billionaire's house with my ex-fiance because that was his cousin. And so it was this weird dichotomy of existence where for me to survive, I'm cleaning houses, but I'm living just off of Madison Avenue in New York City because he let us stay there for free. But I'm in all these conversations with literally insanely wealthy people who many are still friends now. Mm -hmm. And people don't understand that who you are behind the curtain will always come out and be found out. And I think that one of the beautiful things in the coaching industry right now is the people that really were just lucky in their timing of entering the field are getting cleared out. They're going back and getting regular jobs because they didn't have the capacity, the tenacity, the ability to keep going when it got hard. Mm -hmm. And when it got Mm -hmm. hard, they bounced. Mm -hmm. Listen, girl. (laughs) They did not. And yeah, the silent quitting is loud. It's loud. And there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong. It really isn't, do you? Because listen, the right opportunity and I shut my shit down. I was just talking to listen. Does uh, Oprah need somebody to run something at her? What are we talking about? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty loud. And the, I think entrepreneurship too, in, it, in itself, is one of the hardest jobs you're ever going to have. It's so, it, it exposes the most. It exposes your insecurities like nothing else you've ever done. You can hide in a job very easy. Very mm-hmm. easy. Very easily. No one w- could ever know you. You can literally go home and kill your whole family and people will be like, oh my God, I'm so surprised. So quite literally, this is like the best self-development project on the planet, running a business, attempting to running the business, having the desire to do something like this. I love this space. And I think the more transparent we are, the more people we end up helping. I agree. I agree. Because I think that a lot of the image that's put off is that it's all private planes and beaches and that's in there for sure. And it's not always that. This last year, I've had so many friends who in different levels of business got their asses handed to them in some capacity and emotional like family stuff on top of it. We, from last year, we hit in, what was it? August, all our bank accounts got shut down at the same time for different reasons. Like it was insane. Mm -hmm. Three months, I couldn't collect any money, right? And then just like this trickle effect and reactions, whatever, that I went, we went to a 10th of what we were making Mm -hmm. and not even covering like bills and stuff. Mm -hmm. But again, we're just going to figure it out. We've been in financial places before. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But this last year, I knew, and this is the thing, y'all, entrepreneurship is a plant medicine. It is psychedelic experience. Yeah. The thing is, it just, you don't, it's not only 12 hours. It's like the journey that just doesn't quite Mm -hmm. end. And there's some bliss nights and there's some really tough nights. But when you'll stick with it, what's on the other side of it, the lessons create another foundational stability point that makes yeah. 
it makes it not as big of a deal because then it, like this time it was all happening. I'm watching overdraft fees come in because I had 120K pulled out of a bank account, which put us below zero. Sure. And I'm just watching all these overdrafts coming through. Oh, shit. And I'm getting upset until I realized the lesson was I was still putting too much power in money. That those little $15 pings coming through, I had a visceral physical response. Of course, it didn't have to do with the money. It was that I was not doing it or failing or whatever. Yes. On the second week of it happening, I went to the mailbox, grabbed my stack of overdraft fees, felt no charge in my body and got this clear message. Now you're ready to move on. Because as long as that was controlling your mood, power, money has power over you and it's not a tool and it's not, you have to clear that energy. And as mm-hmm. soon as I had done, like processed that, then the business picked up again. So for me, this is a sp- spiritual process. Yeah. And I'm still acclimating to what is it to be, because I am still a hustler. It's just knowing mm-hmm. what is also my femininity. What is also my creativity? What is yeah. really yeah. understanding when I need a break? Yeah. So yeah. for you, what's that transition? Like, how do you, especially with the women you work with now, what's your message to people that have been in that trauma response, hustle or grind or not stepping into things they really want to do versus a more femininity through business. Really, it's stop avoiding feeling. Stop lying to yourself. The basis of what you desire really lies in the truth that people are not telling, that they're afraid to say. Afraid to say, I hate it here. Afraid to say, I don't want to be with you. Afraid to say, I don't want to do this anymore. And so they just suffer. So that first step really is stop lying to you. I have to own my own shit too. I have to own where I'm falling short or where I need more help or where I have to, I can't pretend like it's not happening. I can still be optimistic about outcomes, but I can't pretend like things aren't happening. I have very heavy responsibilities. And so when I'm talking to my clients and my community at large, it's be honest. And then what are we going to do with that honesty? See, it's easier to lie to yourself because you don't have to take action on lies. You can just tell them and people won't ask you any questions. But when you start being honest with yourself, then your lies and you being in contrary of your truth starts to feel like self-betrayal. And that's very disruptive to the soul. And that's when you got to do something about it. And so that's my message is you want to have the life you have. This is not about being a boss bitch, okay? Sit down. No one cares. This is about you being happy. What do you want your life to look like? And if your life looks like boss bitch, whatever that is, I just think all that shit is so fake. I can't stand it. But it's because, girl, at the end of the day, you sit at your damn laptop just like me working. That's right. Stuff on Zoom calls, okay? Sure, if you're able to, the, sa- the same people that aren't making no money got the same issues as the people that are making money when it comes to their personal life. Family, trauma, healing, wanting to feel better, more secure, more confident, all the things. Like, pick a, pick a thing. So that's really the first thing is like, just be honest and then what are we going to do about it? Who's going to help you with that? What's your commitment to yourself? What do you got to stop doing? And you want to create the life, know what you really want. And then now, if the business is the means to supporting, that's my message. The business is the means Mm -hmm. to supporting a life, not let's fit our life around a business. Because I used to be that girl. I used to be the girl that was working 18 hours a day that was neglecting her family, wasn't coming home to 2 a.m. from the office, neglecting my husband and my kids. I was her. So I know what I'm talking about. And it's not fun. And for those of you who are thinking, I'm doing it for the family, they don't give a shit. They really don't. They don't care because they don't get it. It's not their vision. It's your vision. Your absence means more than any amount of money you can make. I'm here to tell you. It, that, that is, it just creates such a deficit. So I think people really need to get clear and honest about what you want out of your life. Who do you want to become? Who are you? 
not what do you do for a living, but who are you? Not your moniker, your title. You know what I'm saying? But who are you as a human being? What type of love is coming from you? What type of compassion is coming from you? What type of grace is coming from you? You know what I'm saying? And people are just so lost. And there's nothing wrong with being that way, but it is when you know that you can do something about it. It's, yeah, what's next? I think that's really the key thing and why a lot of people don't slow down is because once they know the truth, you can't unknow it. That's why psychedelics are a confronting experience because once you know what you know, there isn't going back because if you try, it blows up like it doesn't work. You can't go back. It's like on the Matrix, you had the pill, it's too late. Like you made the decision to want to know more truth about yourself. And this is why y'all, whether you hire a coach or join a community and there's lots of free things, but nothing will ever do for you what community will. We're all healing alone together. And so I get how much I want to help people. Yeah. You still are in your own process that no one will ever understand ever. They won't. I can be empathetic and compassionate and hold space, but no one will ever understand. And so many people are wandering, trying to find someone to understand them. I'm just here to tell you, I never found anyone and I've never understood someone else. But the second I allowed that to be true, then I stopped needing it. I just said, then what do I need with that possibility that no one will understand? But then how will I communicate my needs, assuming no one will understand? That's when you become mm-hmm. empowered and out of that victim mentality of no one gets me. It's like, yeah, that's right. And that can be a, that's the best part. I love when Todd looks at me and he's, man, I have no idea what you're doing. I'm like, isn't it great though? I joke, the reason that we're in a monogamous relationship currently is because I'm like, I'm a whole lot of people in here. I'm unpredictable. <laughs> There's no, no chill, no boring. Yeah. Oh. So we could do this for days and years and all ever and ever. Amen. But what I'd really like to do is bring to at least today to wrap today, April, in what do you, what would you like people to know that maybe they're considering psychedelics, they're exploring psychedelics, they're in this entrepreneur world, have a mission. They know they've got this purpose, but they're not leaning in. What would you say to this person? Usually this woman, because you work with so much with women who have been through the ringer, it's been a rough yeah. ride at times, and they're done. They yeah. are ready. They're just not really sure now what. So it's interesting that you asked me that. So I have a client, several. So I started facilitating psychedelic retreats at the beginning of 2023. And my clients that were coming to me were already clients on the business coaching side. But they were not happy. They were like, something is missing, right? These women are brilliant, some seven figures, many six figures. And they were just like, I, what are you doing? Because why don't you care? Why are you, why you look so unbothered? Why are you so transparent with us? Why are you da da da? all these things. And we started talking about it. And I started sharing with them. And I said, listen, this is what I'm doing. And they were curious. And so they started asking questions. And I started sharing and sending people to your community and sending them to you to follow for the educational piece. And they was like, I want to be the fullness of myself. Like, I want that. And I said, okay. So let's make that happen. So I would tell a person, there's a couple things that I tell people. Make sure when you're exploring these these spaces that people are doing some sort of intake, that you trust them, that there's integration afterwards, that there's community to hold you, that it's exactly what you're needing. Those things are non-negotiables, okay? Befores and afters are non-negotiables. Make sure that you know what you're consuming. Make sure you know how much you're consuming. Make sure you know the type you're consuming. Make sure you know where it came from. These are things that are very important to your process. And the one thing I'll tell you too is that the journey is the beginning of the journey. It's not the end of the journey. 
People think that psychedelics is going to fix their problems overnight. It is not. Well, it's going to expose a lot of shit that you're going to have to work through inside your integration process after that. And Cole said earlier, you will not be the same. You will not think the same. Your neurons are firing differently. Your perception and your perspective on things will likely shift. And I think that, and I want to say, you may encounter, and this is what I tell people, because I don't, I want to say this, I don't believe in the bad trip thing. Me neither. Uh, you, do you mind if I touch on that? Please. So people are like, what if it was, I'm like, listen, um, the shit you're avoiding is the shit you're avoiding because you don't like it. So if you're utilizing something that helps you confront shit you're avoiding, then you might not like it. Okay? You might not like it. You don't like it now. And if what we're overcoming is, is several or instances of trauma, abuse, all the different things, then that's it's going to be uncomfortable. I don't call that bad. I call that the confrontation, right? I call that let's, this is the dealing with it finally on us on a deep subconscious and spiritual level. So I would encourage anyone that's interested, do it. If you can medically do it. And if you can't medically do it, talk to someone like Cole and Ta and get educated on it. Maybe there's another modality that you can utilize. But I just, I can't say enough about it. And so far this year, I've walked 22 women through their psychedelic experience with one of your coaches from your community. And we have nine more for December that we'll be walking through. And I am so grateful to you and your community and just the level of professionalism, education, authenticity that you all exude because this would not even be, I wouldn't even be doing this work, honestly, if I had never come to speak to your, your group. So my clients who are entrepreneurs, who are successful businesswomen, they, watching them expand has just changed my whole perspective. Watching them be confident, watching them do other, watching them, that's funny, that phone ringing, that's actually one of the women that went on one of the journeys <laughs> for a check-in. So watching that has been phenomenal. This is, it's, and it's changing their lives. It's inspiring their spouses. It's having them tear their businesses down and do what they really want to do. Mm-hmm. It's inspiring love and connection and happiness. And to me, that's the most important thing. And if the business is a part of that, then great. And if it's a part of it differently, then great. If it's a part of it in a more expansive way and what you're doing now, great. It's all good. But you've got to get to the meat of whatever's happening within you. We got to stop avoiding the thing that is standing in the way of what you really want. It's you in the way. We're in the way. And for those of you who are like, I'm scared, be scared and do it. Be scared. Hmm. It's like the sound bite of the episode today. That is, that's the show, y'all. I think, I hope that, not I hope, I know that it, everyone listening took something from this today and I'd love to hear about it. Send a message to April on Instagram or send me a message on Instagram or tag us in a story because one of the things that I love about April is, like I've said, the fact that she's sharing the truth of what she's experiencing in her life. And I really encourage more coaches to do this because a lot of coaches aren't sharing because they're scared. And I'm like this, yes. the more that we uphold that there is something to fear, the more we create it, the reactivity, right? Yeah. And so whether you're afraid of stepping into a business, trying a psychedelic, whatever, for me, the only time there's a bad trip was when there was a facilitator who didn't know what they were doing and 
Yeah. The only time for me that I feel like it can go bad physical harm and severe mental things. And and I've had people go for those experiences and got the most empowering thing they ever did. And that was not to ever give their power away to anyone outside of themselves. So then Mm -hmm. was it really bad? No, it was challenging to integrate, but it forced them to community. It forced them to ask for help. So I believe that all experiences can be integrated and it is those harder ones that force us to confront some of the ways we are not honoring and upholding our boundaries. I'm with you. I've had some tough ceremonies. I've had some facilitators that triggered the shit out of me. And I learned that no matter what, I am never surrendering to a person. I find people I trust to guide me yes. who are yes. honest, who take responsibility, yeah. who I can go to and say, hey, I don't really like how you handled that with me. Can we talk about that? That's my yes. goal. Yeah. And so 100%. if you're listening, yes. If you're listening, if you haven't found that, send me a message. I may have someone or some people you can talk to as far as coaches and support, but y'all, the hesitancy to invest in psychedelics is not going to fly. You can find someone to support you at every economic level, but I'll yeah. tell you, you get what you pay for. And what I mean by that is if you're not paying very much to someone then and they have to help you for low cost or free and drive Uber Eats on the weekend and carry a full-time job, you're only getting 10% of them. So you get what you pay for. If you yeah, need more sure. time and attention, <clears throat> you're going to have to pay more. And that just is what it is. There's tons of free resources, tons of integration yeah. circles for as low as 20 bucks. And that's that. April, yeah. thank yeah. you so much for coming Listen, on. Yeah. Wait a minute. We can't, we, wait, you brought up something. I got to say this real fast. Is this the Howard podcast? Yeah. Okay. So I want to just share. So there, we had a therapist in one of our groups. I call the women that go through this process with us stars. So one of the stars is a therapist and she came and she was very, oh, hmm, what's the word? Vocal. And in her experience, she had a lot of inner conflict, internal conflict and self-hatred. And she was vomiting and all the things, all the bodily functions. And when we, because we gave space for that, so we don't save people in their journey. We let all of that happen. And at the end of her journey, when she was landing, she was in a fetal position on the floor in the bathroom. And there was stuff everywhere on the walls, on the mirrors, on the floor, everywhere. And we picked her up. We put her in the tub. We washed her hair. We rocked her. We sang to her. We got her dressed and we carried her to bed. And when she woke up, the first thing she said was, thank you for taking care of me. And that's what she got. Everyone's experience isn't like that. But you want safety. You don't want to enter into a high dose journey where you are going to be in another world or worlds and various versions of yourselves at a fucking discount. That's it. If you go to healers and people that can't be there fully for you because they're so depleted and they're so in deficit, then the care you're going to get is depleted and deficit. And I think everyone deserves the right to be fully held in someone's greatest and fullest capacity, period. My dog is bugging over there, so hopefully it clears out. But thank you you so much for this. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for coming on to share because I... I really, I appreciate all of who you are. I appreciate how you communicate. I appreciate the very direct approach because I think that people are not getting enough direct 
perspectives, actually. And I think that's why people are drawn to you is because they're actually tired of people being nice to them. They want the truth. And that's a very westernized American way of being this nice, yeah. but it's not authentic. It's avoidant. And I can be kind and still get the truth. And I think that by embodying that more and people seeing that, y'all, radical self-honesty requires directness. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. if you're not able to do that with yourself, you need someone to help support you in that, to help be more mm -hmm. direct with yourself. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't always feel nice, but your whole, your relationships, everything change. When you can call up a friend and be like, hey, are we good? Because I'm something feels a little bit off versus, man, April hasn't called me all week. I don't know what's going on because uh, did you text her? No, but I'm sitting here like, what? what? Why, why, are, why does all this extra work? If y'all are mm -hmm. tired, it's because you are working way too hard on shit that doesn't matter. Yeah, no. Yes. All right, April. How can people find you? If How would someone know if they're like, I want to be in April's sphere? What are their options as far as working with April or being around April? The best thing is just to go to Instagram and go to the link in my bio. That's the easiest way to explore what's happening currently, watching my story, seeing how I live, if you like my coaching style. Um, so if you just go to Epic April, E-P-I-C-A-P-R-I-L-E, the link I'm sure is connected to the podcast. And just start there. Send me a DM if you have questions about anything. I'll be happy to answer. I respond to my own DMs. And if it's not me, someone will say that. But if you... Send me a message. I'll be happy to chat with you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Love it. All right, y'all. That's today's episode. Let me know what you think. Leave a review if you really liked this. And if you want more podcasts like this, I think I'm going to start bringing on some more coaches who have worked with psychedelics and can share more of the truth of their story because there are more now willing to share. So if y'all are interested in hearing it, let me know. April, thank you so much. I'm so grateful to Brooke for our introduction when she was like, no, April needs to speak at your event. I was like, oh, <laughs> obviously. Thank you. I appreciate you. I love you so much. And I love everything that you're doing. It's helped me tremendously. That's the beautiful place when people are living authentically. We can actually support each other authentically and everybody wins. So everybody good ships. Yes. All right, y'all. Till next time, be easy, be free. Integration is not optional.